Are okay. we going to introduce ourselves, Penny? Um, we can. I think we all know each other with being the three of us, but just in case there's anyone watching well, the replay, for people we can do that. Right, you know, watching the replay. Yep. So I'm Penny Beeman from Uber Paws of Love. I have my service dog Azul, who's currently laying in his crate where it's cool. And Cam is probably the one I will demo the most tonight if he cooperates. He's right behind my chair. So he is here as well. Um, I like to demo with him because he makes mistakes and that kind of can help show people that are just trying to figure it out the next steps to go as opposed to showing something with Azul where he's gonna do it pretty much perfect or near perfect most of the time. So I like to use Cam for a demo. Cindy? Hi, I'm Cindy Campbell, Cindy Campbell Dog Training. And I have my service dog, Nick here, who's had a fairly busy day, so I don't know how much he'll help us, but he has a new task he's learning that we're going to demonstrate because it can be it's a really useful thing um, for tar it's a type of targeting and I think our just a second well we can go to Lyra and let Lyra introduce herself yeah my my phone I don't know what happened my phone is now and now it's done with that so okay. you just made me you made me feel my pockets looking for my phone and then I realized I was on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. So anyways, we're so, going to, we're, we're, I'm going to show, sorry about that interruption. My phone interrupted and it was thought somebody I thought I needed to, to talk to, but I'm going to show um, laser targeting and mm -hmm. why that can be useful, even though you need to be careful when you're using a laser for a target. Right. Um, but it, it's if it's done with minimal with minimal safety precautions, it's a very safe thing to do, and it can easily but be done without making your dog OCD over the. Yeah, we can major. get into that when we actually start doing the demos. Let's let Lyra go ahead and introduce herself as well. Uh, my name's Lyra. My pronouns are they them there. And I have a service dog, Luna, that is like 90% reti uh, retired at home only and a service dog in training, Bjorn, that is 11 months old. Okay. So with our topic tonight being targets, if you think about it, targets are not really tasks, but there are a bunch of tasks that we can train our dogs to do that start with targets. So before we get into like the meat and bones of the task, I wanna kind of make sure that everybody understands various targets and you know, the simple steps for teaching it kind of thing, I guess. And so that's kind of where I'm going. Lyra, do you use targets at all? Uh, like teaching like, touch with your hand or having yep. them forget something away from you? Um, yep, those are both types of targets. Um, Azul will also do paw targets. The chin rest is a target. But yeah, the touch to the hand is one of the most common. And it's, yeah. one of the most, it's one of the most useful because it can be used to teach so much. Yeah, I do the hand targeting, targeting an object away from you. Uh, I have a few target sticks with a little ball at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like that's how I taught like lights on, light, lights off is teaching them to target the light switch and then Perfect. nose bumping it or grabbing it with their mouth until they eventually learn how to flip it up or down. Cool. So we might have to look at some harder targets tonight too, being the group that we have, but I wanna do at least show the simple one for beginners and then we can go through a couple of things that we do. So first of all, when I'm teaching targets, I'll take a dog treat, gotta figure out where my camera is. So this is just a little soft piece of duck and I'll take it in my hand so that my thumb is holding it in my hand. Get my hand where I can see it. 
So I will start there. So the dog is touching it to get the treat. I'm gonna get up and see if I can get Cam to move and join us. Cam. Oh yes. Good boy. Yes. Come here. Yes. Good boy. Hold on. Over here. Come on. Nose. All right, so he kind of automatically went into the under position and I use that under position for an early training for under like in between my legs. But then I also use those same hand targets for teaching the tuck under when I'm sitting in a chair as well. So I'll get into that a little bit more later tonight, but that's my beginning targets. And then from hand targets, I don't have my regular target stick. But Cam is used to the target stick, so we're going to try this one tonight. Here, nose. Yes. And so I'll start in the same position all the time at first. Cam, nose. Nose. Yes. He's probably I have a, a little bit too. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just wondering, your uh, fetch stick there, is that uh, solid or hollow? Because I've heard yes. some people say the new ones are like solid rubber and mine's squishy and hollow. This is kind of like a Nerf dart texture. It's solid, but like, can you like squeeze it and press it in? Like, it's no nope. hollow. Does it feel solid? Nope, it's solid. Oh, weird. And this, I actually don't even know where I got it. I came from somebody, nice. <laughs> somebody that was in my house with their dog, and they left it here because I didn't buy this one, but I like it and it worked. So we do target sticks in the basics like that. And then we also do target discs. And so sticking with nose, I'll have Cam do his nose. Nose. Come on, yeah, nose. No, I know he uses this most for paw. Nose, good. Which is why I said I'd like to start with Cam. Nice. There you go. You want me to have Nick, Nick is right here. Do you want me to have him do it? Well, and he did it eventually. Come here, Cam. Get him a little bit closer. Nose. Oh, nice. That's why I like to start with Cam because he'll make mistakes and show us. Nose. Perfect. Thank you. So then I also will use this like the light switch type thing or if we're working on close a door or something. Cam knows if I drop this on the floor to hit it with his paw. But then we also start like up high. Paw. He's going to hit it with his nose now. There you go. Good boy. So that's something he already knows well. And he'll even get it up higher. Pa. Pa. Up here. Pa. There you go. Two paws. Good job. He's like, oh, I like this duck. Can I have it? So sit. Another thing I do with nose targets just in the early stage is I practice doing it down low. Nose. Yes. Gotta break my duck in and up high, nose, nose, right here, nose. He's like, I can't see you, nose. Yes, good boy. So those are all my early targets. I do, I also do a chin rest. I don't usually use the disc for that. It confuses Cam, but so then I kind of showed chin rest in the last one when we did um, DPT and things, because I'll use chin, chin, no, chin. There you go, good boy. All right, go around. So then with targets, I'll do a position all the way around my body. Go on. To get him right where I want him. And I also use that for working on heel and also getting focused just before we do something. So those are my early basic ones that I start with. From there, I go on. Um, Cindy, why don't you tell us about the target that you want to demonstrate tonight? Okay, so Mr. Nick, come here. So I'm going to have Nick demonstrate, pardon my mess. Um, I'm going to get where he can, he can see this. So I'm, I have... What we're working on right now is Nick is learning how to um, use a laser for a target so I can point across the room with the laser and show him 
what we're going, you know, what I want him to retrieve. So um, Nick, come here, can you touch? So what I'm doing is nice. So what I do is I put the laser, I shine it on my hand and then I have him touch my hand. He's already has a very strong, back up, a very strong um, target, uh, hand target. So touch, yeah, you're gonna get more. Come on, touch, nice. So um, he's got a strong hand target, so it's pretty easy for him. And then once I fin have done the hand target a few times, I'll try with something else to touch and he touches it. And then you can have him do it in other, nice. And the idea is to get it so I can't see. All right, can you get it? I guess you, I don't think you can see this, but there's a cloth down there, Nick, get it? Thank you. And the idea is to be able to do that from across the room and have him get the item that you're retrieving. Yeah, we could see it. <laughs> so if we can just pause here, because I know Azul loves lasers and I've kind of worked a little bit on the task you've worked on, but haven't broke it down that simple. So if I can get my Zuli to activate and do something, I want to try it with him. Okay. I, I really, I had somebody suggest doing it that way and I really like breaking it down. You know, it, if it's not working, break it down. If it's still not working, break it down even smaller. And then it really gets them to be reinforced on what you're asking them to do. Yeah, I really want to try it using the laser pointer too. Right. Well, I just found one. I think it was seven dollars on Amazon that is um, USB rechargeable. Right here. Yeah, because uh, Luna really struggles if I tell her to grab something, yes. and she'll like look That's around at the different items. Like, wait, which one? <laughs> Right. If you're pointing yeah. across the room, it can yeah. be more difficult. Yeah. Is he doing it? He did it once. He doesn't want my treats. He just wants to play with the laser, which is part of the OCD behavior you can get with a laser. Yeah. I got him off out Go of the monster. Go get a green monster. I swear dogs wait for us to be doing stuff like this to embarrass us. <laughs> well, Nick is telling me he's, Nick decided this afternoon he's hungry. And he did this by telling, he went and got Green Monster. Every this time I try green. and show a trick, you know, they don't want to do it. This is Green Monster. So he did go and get it when I asked him to. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, he is done with. I'll see if I can get Cam to do it, although Cam doesn't really chase the laser much. He will for a little while. Oh. Well, if it, 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 what you're doing is putting it on your hand. Right. Cam, if I can find my hand. Cam, here. Nose. Look. Come here. So I'm going to have Green Monster yes. retrieved to me. The boy. Until he's done with Nose. Green Monster. No. I just put kibble in it and let him. Here you go. I can't get far enough away from Cam mm -hmm. to do it. Nose. Look. Nose. Nose. Yeah, he doesn't care about the laser. Well, you, it, sometimes it takes several sessions. Uh, yeah, he's going to eat the laser in order to get the treat. He won't. I didn't think Cam would do it. I think Azul will do it, but I'll practice during the day when he's more likely to work. So I wonder how, uh, Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I was saying, I wonder how uh, easy it is for them to see the laser with the color it is with dog's color blindness. You know, them only seeing certain colors, like they yellow. Can see I think it's color. yellow. Blue. They can Yellow, see the blue, green, color maybe. of the red laser as long as it's not on green grass, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah, so they can see more colors than originally thought, 
they just struggle like when red and green are on top of each other. And that's so to, actually a common color when men are co colorblind. That's usually what they are is red, green, color. Right. And then there's a yellow, blue one as well. But red, green is the most common. And so and that's where they figure dogs struggle. They can see red as a color as long as the background isn't either an orange because orange is too much like red or green. Mm -hmm. And then oh. they struggle with it. So, I mean, yeah, I, I read that it was just shades like uh, black and white grayscale and then uh, yellow, uh, yellow, blue. They used, mixes yeah, they used to believe it was grayscale, but now they realize that it's not the grayscale that they used to think it was. Well, no, I, I just meant like the other colors that they see. I thought it was a lot more limited of just like yellow and blue and then mixes of those colors. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they see, what wavelengths they see. Yeah, I don't either. I just know that it's not what they used to think it was yeah. where they had very limited, you know, muted mm -hmm. colors. Now they think yeah. they have all the colors. They're just probably don't look the same to them as uh, they do us. So well, they see through their nose a lot more. Right. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's not a color and it is just like the blue and yellow. Like maybe they, if they have a, a blue or yellow colored laser pointer, maybe that'd be better. They See, do we have, have a green one green. and the green one is brighter and Azul definitely prefers the green laser. Mm. But it's my husband's and I don't know where that is right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's two sources. For, just review this for anybody who may be watching this. There's two sources of... Um, laser pointers that can be economical there's dollar tree and they're hit and miss whether they have laser pointers but that's probably the least expensive place to buy laser pointers and um the one that's what mine are my cheap the ones i've, re I've purchased at um dollar tree all have a regular flashlight in them nice yeah um, me too and then I purchased one on Amazon that should be coming in the next couple of days that's USB rechargeable. And I like that because it's rechargeable. Yeah, yeah that would be yeah. nice. We put rechargeable batteries in my husband's green laser. Mm -hmm. So it will only last about 10 minutes and then we need to charge it again. But oh. it, right. it's not but, designed to be rechargeable. But if you have, you know, I... I otherwise you're going through batteries like crazy yeah. especially if you when you're training something right so, i hate battery waste <laughs> i grabbed yeah, four or five toxic. of the dollar store ones so that i could do it over the winter time when it got dark so early which is when we were using it the most because Azul still needed exercise before bed and so we would be outside typically in the snow and the red worked well for that but he's never been a real big fan of the red in the house it's just yeah. not as exciting as the green. It was enough to get him out of bed for a minute and then he moved to a different bed. Well, I, I see that. I, I wanna touch real quick on some of the uses of hand targets because you- uh, uh, Right, I did it, go ahead. You alluded to it, um, but with moving um, cam around and showing how you move cam around, but any anything that you might use food to lure for if you have reinforced given if you've spent the time reinforcing your hand target which by teaching a lot of behaviors using the hand target you automatically have done that that you can use that to lure positions you can lure um, behaviors but you're using your hand as a lure and that's much easier to fade out than food because you can gradually roll up fingers and things like uh, today I was um, working with Nick it we haven't done it in months and we hadn't done it consistently enough but every time I get out by um, signal lights I'm working with him targeting with his nose the signal light to push it and um, so we were working on that today and I started out with my whole hand covering the button and then I moved it I changed it to fingers and we did this at a water fountain as well so we're kind of doing things a little bit weird because we're generalizing as we're learning the task 
but um, they're all different buttons. But he's learning it and he's doing it. But I can start with, you know, four fingers over the button so he's not going to push it and gradually move down to two. So then he's just touching my fingers with the nose and one and then just pointing at it. So that's one thing I used it to teach some obedience um, behaviors like a um, sit to stand and a stand uh, down to stand by holding my hand in a position and it's kind of a weight position. Mm -hmm. And I used it for rear feet targeting. <laughs> I use that, you know, the luring hand target into position a lot service dog wise. Like if I need him to be between me and a car door or me and a cart or me in the aisle in the store or you know that then I can get him anywhere around me with that hand I'm target push, without a yeah, need for a food reward. If I'm pushing a shopping cart and I want him completely out of the way, I'll um, pull Nick in between the shopping cart and me. And that way there's no, ch there's almost no chance he's going to get hit by the shopping cart because I, I can body block it. So he doesn't right. get run over. But it, and I reinforced it so heavily with Azul through the positions game that even mm -hmm. just doing it is reinforcing. Now I very rarely reinforce a hand target, and it's unless a great we're specifically time. trying to build momentum and teaching something else in that session. And it's a great conversation starter when you're starting out your um, your your daily task. Nick and I do it every night. I'm working on. I'm one of the other things I'm working on is a, a good DPT position for me and I decided to teach it while I'm getting ready while I'm going to sleep so I have him crawl up on me and or he's working on getting to crawl up on me and half the issue with him is being willing to crawl on me and that it's okay that he get up on me and so I've been doing a lot of hand targets with that to and um that's how he gets his dinner I know I let my dog eat dinner in my bed but <laughs> Um, I don't usually uh, dribble feed Cam dinner, but he's had a stressful day with thunderstorms in the area. So I've been drop feeding kibble to him. You know, the magic hand thing as he's sitting underneath me. I love that magic hand. And I love dri dribble feeding has so much value. Especially yeah, I almost trying to never do it with Cam. Now he's like looking at the blanket. Where'd it go? Are you going to drop another piece? <laughs> Well, so you know, we were me and look back down at his blanket. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing that can be helpful is if you're doing any kind of um, counter conditioning and desensitization, you can add it as you're increasing the criteria on how your dog feels about some, you know, right. when, when you're doing it, you're trying to get your dog to cooperate with you and to not feel bad about something. And if you're trying to kind of change their feelings about it. If the feeling is, oh, if I come over to mom and touch mom's hand or, or dad's hand or my parents' hand, then the dog's going, you know, the, that becomes part of the counter conditioning and it gets them looking back at you and looking to you. Right. Um, so Nick's Lyra, do you want to demonstrate, you said your dog's We'll do like turning the light on. Do you want to yeah. be able to demonstrate that or like steps along the way in training it? Or uh, would you prefer not to? Yeah, no, I don't mind. Uh, I just don't have a good phone stand, so I'm going to have to hold it in my hand. <laughs> yep. Nope. I get that. I'm actually using too. a cheap stand that this is the first time I've ever used it. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how well it's working. <laughs> Sorry. I broke, I broke oh, this, the yeah. best part of my cheap phone stand. I had it was it attached to my GoPro stand. Now, see, I do have one that will attach to my target stick, but it doesn't work well with my phone. It works with my GoPro. This was a cheap little looks like thumbs up kind of thing uh -huh. that I bought at the dollar store. And because my phone is actually charging right now too, and I have it plugged well, in, I'm nice. using I'm it have upside to down. So it has room for the cord underneath. I'm going to have to look for that. Dollar thing. Love dollar it works. Store. 
Good girl. And it will let me like stretch it out if I need to landscape my phone as well. Whoops, but it does push buttons occasionally. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing is if you're looking for a cheap target stick, a wooden, you know, a spoon, like a cooking spoon, a kitchen spoon is always a good tar target stick and you can actually use it as a baiting stick with some putting some bait on it. Yeah. My go-to target stick is also a cheap <laughs> yeah. dollar store um, selfie cam stick. <laughs> yep, that works so too. So I just took the thing off the end so it has a little tip. And yeah, that's my or if I, really I try to do everything cheaply if possible. If you're really on the cheap, you can get a branch, a straight branch. <laughs> right. That <laughs> could be a little more in. challenging, but you can. Yeah. See, my dogs would chew on the branch. That's why I say it could be challenging. But yes. yeah, you can use anything. I've also said like paint, the sticks that you would stir paint with that you can get for free at almost any hardware or paint store. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll give you a couple of them and that makes a great target stick. Yep. But all right, Lara, let's go ahead and turn it over to you so you can do the light switch. Show us how yep. you do that. Let's switch the video around. Over here. Sit. Good girl. Okay, so I got a little light switch here, and I basically just started out with it in my hand like this, and then telling her to paw or touch, which, yeah, uh, Luna, paw, uh-oh, no, sit. Stay in the camera. Okay. Pop. Pop. Oh, good girl. You touch. Good girl. <laughs> touch. Good girl. And yeah, and then eventually upping the criteria of that, you know, they have to hit the actual light switch part. Um, you wanna touch? No. Touch. Good girl. See, then she actually touched it. And then Luna Pop. <laughs> now he's like wait what are we doing <laughs> right i want to play pop. you got pop good girl and yeah Pushy boys I'll, I'll show you on the actual light switch <laughs> luna and I, I basically then transfer that to uh like taping the light switch to something low having them do it to that raising it up higher mm -hmm. uh luna Light off. Luna. Uh, I have not had her do it in this house very much. <laughs> uh, Luna. Light off. Light off. Good girl. Light off. Light off. Thought about it. Right. Light off. You know where the light is. Right here. Light off. Light off. No, nope, it's right here. No, not the thermostat. Right here. <laughs> Luna, lay off. It's right here. Luna, right here. Oh, good girl. Oh. And now she's gonna make me a liar because she knows how to do this. Yeah, right. <laughs> she knows how to do it. She's Luna, right here. Lay off. Yeah, and she's hitting oh, it with her girl. nose, lay which off. is the same criteria you were using in the living room. Just hit it. Yeah. Good girl, light up. Good, good girl. There she did it. <laughs> good job, Luna. Hey, okay, Luna. Yeah, you, you do have to practice stuff for them to retain the information. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you don't I do have something similar to your light switch, but mine is the push right, button one. So, wind you guys with it. I haven't tried this with Cam yet either because this is something I did with Azul, so he can turn it on and off. I went with this because it's more likely to, when we're out and about, like not just a general day-to-day, -day, but when we're out, we do a lot of camping or you know, traveling where we might be somewhere else. And so I need something like this that I can stick down and Azul is not necessarily hitting the light on somebody else's wall. So this is good for us and I like I can sit it on the floor and have him push it or I can also have it up higher. Um, it's got a little sticky thing on the back that I've actually stuck on a couple of different things temporarily, you know, for a day or so and then pulled it back off and sealed it back up and it sticks again. And it also has a little handle. 
So you can hook it onto something like that. So I've hooked it onto right. a chair or something like that as well. Just so or you like know, my target stick. <laughs> these uh, so, lights, uh, um, they do have these at Dollar Tree too. The, the flip yeah. switch you have? Yeah. And they have uh, attachments on the back as well. The little. Yeah. I've looked at our Dollar Tree and they don't seem to have that one. I think they used oh, to, but I haven't been able to find it at ours. I know, I know I've seen them here uh, recently-ish They at different times. I think it, it just yeah. rotates stuff out. You just got to hit it. <laughs> yeah. nope. I've seen them in like hardware stores and whatnot, but then they're like $5 and I'm like, eh, yeah. you know, I could spend that if I really needed it, but I don't really need it. So I'm holding out to find a cheaper one. Yeah, like but my Target so, got for $3. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I mean... Three, I might do more as well too, but five or six, which is what I usually see them at. I'm like, nah, I'll wait. <laughs> well, and you <laughs> if can I really get them in multi packs, it. right? Hi. Okay. So kind of just the same thing going on the nose target. I'm gonna see if I can get Cam to actually turn this on. Don't know if he will, and I'm trying to make sure you guys can see and get Cam for like five bucks or three dollars off the amazon yeah nice yeah and it's got a little pen clip no those are nice sorry somebody yeah needed, mine's uh, very similar it just doesn't have a ball on the end uh, and the handle is soft almost like a cushioned foam nose thank you sometimes they need cuddles nose nose yes yeah, getting yeah, him to not, gets to not push bite the it right away. Let's see if we can push it hard enough to turn it on. Nose. Nose. <laughs> yes. You need to go in the other room. Nose. You've been so good in most of push. these rooms. Nose. Nose. Yeah, he doesn't want to hit it hard enough with his nose. That's Let's the issue I've off. had. I had physical therapy today in home and Bjorn cried like the entire time wanting to meet the lady. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. Okay, Nick failed his CGC again. Oh, oh no. no. He wants to meet the other dog. Yeah. So every time Sarah gets a, yes. now every time Sarah gets another um, oh, yes. student by, we're having a friendly stranger. <laughs> So we've been doing the CGC. She's trying to get him past it. One more time. Okay. So the other thing that a target can be used for is closing doors. Oh yeah, uh, I could show that one too if you want. Oh, can you? Okay, because Nick <laughs> does it. But all I, right, my rooms. Go ahead and show room. that one, and then I'll demonstrate. Um, do it in under a chair as well. Okay. You're gonna do under it using a target for under the chair? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's something that Cam doesn't do either, but he should be able to get under my chair. So we'll and see. Luna's, I think Luna's gonna do the door closing. Yep, go ahead. Shut door. Shut door. Again, shut door. Come on, shut door. Shut the door. Now you're just gonna make me say it 50 million times. Come on, shut the door. Oh, good girl. Shut door. She's like, I know uh, something like this. <laughs> Luna. Yeah, plus I'm not on my phone tonight. I'm on my laptop, so it's harder to move around. Shut the door. Good girl, shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. <laughs> she keeps just jumping on the wrong spot. She's supposed to jump up on the door and shut the door. Come on, shut the door. Oh, good girl. Oh, no. Sorry, she's just not cooperating today. <laughs> so with Nick, I put a tug on one so on the side of the door that the door has to swing to. Oh, okay. to the door frame. Shut door. So when I have him close the door, if he, rather than oh. have, if it's Shut door. More than halfway open, he pushes it towards the closet. He pushes it towards the other door. Shut. So I've taught him that if it's 
more than halfway open, tug the tug and pull oh. the door so he can push it. And then he pushes it closed. Hey, Lyra, <laughs> your camera's not on. Oh, <laughs> my phone was uh, telling me that the phone was dying. <laughs> uh, hold on. Hey, Luna, shut door. I think somebody learned a bad oh, habit. Yeah. Okay, get back. Good girl. Okay, come here. Come here. Shut door. Right here. That's the opening it. Yeah, yeah. Shut door. Shut door. <laughs> yeah, that, she's we ready to go to bed too. That. Yeah, we basically did a game with that of like opening and closing the door. Uh, but she's supposed to basically target the door with her nose. Luna, come here. Shut door. Good girl. Shut door. Yes. Good girl. Shut door. Nick Shut told door. Yes. his boss to open it. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Yes. Yep. She got uh, it. She used her paw, but she got it. Yep. Good girl. And okay. you know, I really don't care when it comes to something like that. If they can do the job, if they choose to do it in a way that's different than Good the original girl. way, as long as yeah. they're doing it and they're not hurting themselves or what they're doing. Yeah. You know, I don't care if they choose their own way to get the job done. But yeah, obviously just haven't done that in a while either. <laughs> Okay, I keep I keep installing tasks and forgetting. I forgot I had taught Nick how to tug something open when I put the tug on the door. And then mm -hmm. I was going back through videos, old videos of him, and he was tugging the, a drawer open. So I said, we got this. So now, he ha now it's his job. I have to close, I divide my apartment in half and close the bedroom door during the day otherwise he goes back there and behind me it's street level and there's cars going back and forth into their garages and people walking by so I have that part of the house sectioned off so he I can be so he's with me to as a management strategy and so I, I now have him grab the tug and close the door when we leave the bedroom nice I taught Azul that when he was really young and he wasn't a big fan of it. So we didn't do it for ages until just recently he's found value in it because he likes to lay in there with the windows open and we don't necessarily want that coming in to the whole house when it's heat season and we have the heater on. So we would close the door just tight enough without latching it. And if he wanted out, he had to use the tug to get out. He knew how to do it. He just didn't like it. And then finally he decided, well, if he was letting himself out versus practicing with me standing right there, that it was fun to do. Well, we had a problem because I had, at the time, I had a had the trash and the recycling in a drawer in the kitchen. It, uh -huh. it was a pull-out drawer the size of a trash can. Right. And Nick figured out how to open it. I ended up having, and was um, fishing through the trash. So I yeah, ended up course. having to um, put child locks on it so he wouldn't do that. Right. But as you can see, he's learned something this week after totally. having been held for two hours a day. <laughs> he normally that's does not good like though, because that's going to make your DPT positions all the easier. Well, I want him on my chest. So right. we're, working, we're working on that. So, but if he can get on your legs when you're sitting, he's more likely to get on your chest when you're laying down. Well, he'll do it. It's just it's it, it's one of those things that it's going to take. Once he decides it's okay, it's going to be real easy. But in the meantime, right. he's not. He's so afraid sure. of hurting you. He doesn't want to do it. Exactly. And I haven't really been pushing. I've been getting somewhat close because and I've been targeting so I've been so we'll be laying on the bed and I'll target have him target my hand and then target my hand and then target my hand and I'll have my head against or my hand against the headboard and I'll have him target my hand and right so, and then he gets his treat so we're working on it that way and he's gradually getting there but I 
I'd rather keep it small, you know, <laughs> and not try and force him any further than he's ready to go. And he's put himself in that position, in the pr position I want on his own several times on the couch, but the bed is more difficult because there's more room for him to try and go sideways. Right. And that definitely makes sense. It's like when you're teaching a tuck early on, you want to have a smaller area that they have to try to fit into because it teaches them to, you know, be in that spot. If it's too big, then they don't necessarily want to get close. They want to sprawl out. Right. So that's like, I never taught hand targets to dogs before I started training service dogs. And once I learned that, like now every single dog I train, I teach hand targets to because well, they're I so handy for so many things. I mean, really, especially handy for service dog tasks and service dog foundations, but they're really handy for general pet foundations as well. <laughs> yeah, well, so my parents have a doodle. We won't go there. And the doodle has typical puppy behaviors, typical doodle behaviors, because my parents are typical doodle owners. And so what I had stayed with them for about six months while we were getting some housing things sorted out. And while I was staying with them, I couldn't stand their dog because, I mean, she's cute, she's cuddly, she's really, she's got a nice personality, but she's spoiled rotten and she just needs to learn some manners. So I started working with her. I think the first thing I taught her was how to touch and how to, you know, how to use a target. So, and I had forgotten that that was something I had taught her. And when I was working with her last week, I showed my, I was showing my parents a hand target and her nose immediately went to my hand when I showed them the hand target. So their homework assignment this week is because they didn't do any of their homework last week, their homework assignment this week includes doing lots of hand targets. Yeah, they're definitely and, very helpful. And, you know, you can get your dog, you can use your hand to get your dog into a safer position so much easier that way. And like my great Pyrenees, she has zero recall. And, but if you take your hand and you do a target, she'll follow your hand to, for a target because she knows she's going to get a cookie if she does that. So that's, you know, that if you can't get her to recall any other way, you do that. Right. I was trying to get my phone positioned so that you guys can see under my chair. Um, I think sideways is going to be best because that's where I'm going to start. Yeah, you can see under there. So Cam was chilling out being good. He sees the tree so he knows he's going to be asked to work again. Cubby? Yeah, the benefits to targets you guys are talking about, I feel like I use luring for a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, the yeah. advantage of or, a no, target. As a target, like the specific hand, uh, the, I, I don't want to say hand, hand symbol, is that the right word? Yeah, the, the hand cue that I use for mm -hmm. uh, having them follow my hand. Uh, I can use to, you know, put them in certain positions, lure them into the position I want them in. Well, right. It's super nice to be able to do that. The, the advantage of having them follow a hand target as opposed to luring with food is you can have them follow that hand target anywhere, anytime. Right, and now having it to get Cam under the chair. Now he is actually more luring than hand targeting. I'm kind of doing a mix of both. But so if okay. you're using I'll... just your hand and not uh, food to move them, it that's not luring and it's just targeting. Yeah. Okay. Right, because you're not using food to to bribe them so or learn it them quicker. It. They so learn it quicker if you use a hand target than if you 
Then if you use the lure, the lure you're supposed to fade out within 10 reps of something if you can. That's the ideal. Otherwise, you're getting too dependent on it. But you can use the hand target because that's often what becomes. He was almost there and I waited too long to give him the treat. So again, one of the things in training, you don't want to go too far too fast. But um, so, yeah. you know, like if uh, my hand signal for stand was to touch, so I'd put if he'd be if he was in a sit, I would tell him I would put my backwards. hand on to touch, and he'd lean you forward. You didn't tell him what I wanted him to do, but he went backwards to do it. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, I thought targeting. Static thing where it's like sitting still and then luring is like getting to them to like to doing it in motion so i thought you know regardless of if food was being used you know i use food as a reward after i lure them into the position yeah yeah i thought that would be luring but, but luring is when you have the food the piece of food in your hand and you're directing oh. like penny's more luring um, right now with because cam. he's never done this before so with azul i use the hand targets but with cam i am more luring like, only because the under here. the chair is really challenging for him come on get up you're gonna go now yeah. thank Jump you the cuddles like this he's like nope don't want to do it i thought this was luring here okay. nice <laughs> like but i no, guess that's, that's targeting right uh, yeah i thought that was luring <laughs> that's targeting yeah yep you're done the chairs are hard for him because of his hips he did it three times and then he's like mom don't make me do it again i'm done uh-huh. Well, well, we yeah, should talk so about paw targets and what we use them for. My goal with that is like, I'll start out with luring it, but eventually I want to do away with the lure and just do targets. So like with Azul, all I got to do is put my hand down on the side I want him to be facing and he will automatically go around to the other side and crawl under to be able to touch my hand because he knows it's the easiest way to the hand. Yeah. So, and the goal now is I use a lot less treats because of that hand target. And when you use the hand target, the goal is to teach that motion of whatever you're doing. Like, so I taught Nick to do a go round for rally by having him target my hand going around me and then moving, switching to the other hand and sitting. Yeah. It was a complex process to do it, but that's essentially what I had him do was follow my hand and then get him into a sit and that right. was go round. and right it's much easier to do that with a target than it is to do that with a, a lure or because now if i start to move my hand in a motion like this like i'm gonna you know in front of me like to go around he knows he's gonna go around right and, and I've got it now. All I got to do is use my hand without my arm and go around. So, and or like go around. putting my hand out if he's in a sit, putting my hand out that I want him to stand. Not only does he stand at that point, he does a kickback stand, which is we we, we worked to get that. But that's yeah. a fancy stand for obedience, and it makes it just makes him pop a little bit. So it, you know, it, it, it's a style thing. You get style points. Right, but, but and I haven't done much with rear feet targets. Very, and, very little. I haven't pushed it. it well, it, initially, it takes a while to get the rear because they just they're kind of like, "What the heck do you want?" Um, I noticed today since we haven't really done any parkour since November, Nick's out of shape. He needs to right. get jumping again and get more confident with that so he needs to wait a little bit longer after his surgery though <laughs> before he's oh, doing too challenging of parkour basic stuff maybe <laughs> we were doing basic stuff we were right park benches 
Yeah, I've really been sucking since my foot stuff. Like only being able being being able to do stuff like from sitting from the couch. Like, but there's a lot you can do from the couch. I yeah. tried to explain to my parents that play Q play is a game that can be done sitting, standing, or laying down. Yeah, and there's a lot of things you can't do from a couch, but there's a good many things you can. You can yeah. do target you training. You just have from to get couch. creative sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you can do target training from a couch. Um, so. I'm just curious, what other types of targets do you guys use? I like, use do you do ear. anything other than a simple touch and paw and chin? Do you do any other targets? I know, Cindy, you do the rear foot target against a object. But yeah, the, tar like I said, targeting away from you. So not something that you're holding, like across the room targeting. Yes, I build that into my retrieve to a point. I don't do it really strongly, but yes, I mean that's how I, I get. Oh, I just. <laughs> I do. That's how I develop that retrieve for like my key items. So, um, my big items are my meds bag, my water bottle, my car keys, my phone. All of those I end up putting on name, but before I'm ready to put them on name, I'll work on the sending them to that particular object and like my water bottle is really good for that because it's got a long rope on it and they don't need the rope anymore because they do more of the bottle I just leave the rope there because then I always have a tug toy with me wherever I'm at <laughs> but so I would use it as like a tug I could toss it away he would bring back the toy to play tug with it and I could toss it away again and then I got to the same place where I could like just sit it down on the other side of the room when we were not playing and eventually when I say you want a tug, go get it. <laughs> and then eventually I put a name to it. But yeah, so I mean, I did targeting further away. I like Cindy's laser because that's like the purpose of being able to go get things that you're not gonna have on name or use repetitively. Like say, um, Cindy and I have talked about this before, both my husband and I have a hard time picking things up off of bottom shelves. And so like it, the grocery store if we want a can of food that's on the bottom shelf there's many times we've decided nope not happening today and walk away and leave it there so to be able to tell the dog i want this can not the peas not the you know not the ones on either side i want this particular can and so having being able to point that out from a distance further away than you know actually being able to touch it is very or, valuable or which sock you want them to bring you because they've brought three quarters of the socks out from the laundry. Um, <laughs> you get a blue, a green, a red, and who knows yeah. what else, but not two of the it, same color. <laughs> exactly. Well, the, the other thing is I used to, I haven't done it in a while. I don't think I've done it in about 20 years because I started teaching Nick a different way, but I used to teach go outs to a target with um, my Newfoundland. I had taught her to do that. And I haven't done it with Nick the same way because I taught him to do go rounds instead of go outs. Right. And that's instead typically go out what I people. use is the, you know, go out to it, walk around it, come back. Or and go left um, or go right. And I use right. the same cues that I use for, well, actually I was using buy and way, which is herding cues. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to use the, that because. Then we have four different versions of left and right. And then he has to think, I can't tell left from right. So I can't expect my dog to. I uh, had right. another example that uh, I was reminded of um, for a distance uh, target that like for teaching a task that is helpful. Um, which was uh, like put, you know, uh, putting objects away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like you would teach place. them to retrieve, the, yeah, to retrieve the object and then put it away. And so, you know, you start teaching the hand target, and uh, and then you know you have you put your hand where you're wanting them to put the object away, and them target that to bring the object to. 
I think Ashlyn. And Ashlyn did join us because she uses the target stick and the handicap buttons a lot. So thank you, Ashlyn, for calling attention. I'm using my phone tonight, so I don't have the chat. Oh, did open they say that only in chat? Yeah, I didn't use that either. Yeah. Well, and then um, I use, well, I'm teaching Nick because I do stupid shit, like break my ankle on a somewhat regular basis. Um, so I'm teaching Nick to use the signal light buttons on the traffic for the traffic lights. So right. if I'm ever out on my knee scooter or whatever, I can have him do it. So, and anything with distance you can do a target a different way. So one of the things that, um, what's her name? Susan something in Canada. Susan, Susan A. Susan Garrett? Aylesby. Garrett? Yeah, Aylesby. Oh, Sue, the, yeah. yeah Sue Aylesby, Sue, Sue A. The training levels. Yeah. So one of the things she said to do is put the, have, put the target, the, the have them be able to target I don't know where they, oh, that's where they are. Post-its. And what you can do is then fold the post-its up as needed, but they can target the post-it and then you can teach them to repeatedly target the toast, the post-it and use those to target different, different things. So if you want them to target different doors or it, you know, and then you can move it, the target around easy. I've tried that and I'm sure it's my failure, not my dogs, because I've tried it with like four or five different dogs and never had it work for me. <laughs> so that's what I say. It's my failure, I'm sure. But that's where I went with the target disc. And as well as the first one that I usually use the target disc for, because I got him used to this first. And I mean, this is just a Frisbee and he's got four or five of them. But, um, so teaching paw, nose, and chin targets to this first, then I can move this around to those objects and hold mm -hmm. it where I want it. And they find this easier than the post-it. And then I can that. phase this out and they'll still touch that object. I've done that. And then I've also done the um, paw targets to use um, for the healing and the um, awareness the rear end and front end awareness by using um, an upside down food bowl and having them put the front paws up and learn to walk around the bowl. Yep, I know and a lot of people do that. I've never done that one either. <laughs> and of course, paw targets are used in par parkour when you're having them jump up and down on things and paw paws up and paw on things and- um, Right. Did you want and me to a position with a one paw on four different objects of varying heights? So Zul does mm -hmm. that one quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know how much longer the video is, but did you want me to demonstrate the picking up the toys before I feed my dogs? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, that's another part of a target that we haven't really talked about because they're either handing you the yeah. toy or dropping it in a toy box. Yeah, exactly. Then so, bring and we should it. end it with that one. So go ahead and show us. That's a very good one. Okay, Luna, go get the toy. Oh, no, no, right there. Get the toy. Go get the toy. No, no, not in the okay, room. Okay, my supper. <laughs> Come here. Over there. Go get that toy. Right there. Get the toy. And she has no <laughs> idea what toy I'm talking about. Luna, come here. There's too and many. Me. Here, okay. Luna, get a toy. Good girl. Put it away. Good, good girl. Yes. Hey, Luna, go get the toy. Get the toy. Oh, you're, you're being a turd. <laughs> Come here. Okay, kennel. Good boy. Okay, Luna, go get a toy. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, put it away. Good good girl so yeah basically having them retrieve it to your hand and putting your hand on the object they want you want them to just pause the thing in and when they try and give it to your hand you drop it and then eventually you can just kind of lure them to the thing and not put your hand in it 
one of them. Right. I've got Azul to where right. I can send him out to pick up any toy in the room and he'll bring it to me and put it in my hand. And if I'm sitting there with the toy box, like in between my legs, because our toy boxes are much smaller, so I can kind of sit Indian style around it almost. <laughs> but um, so if I'm sitting there, he'll drop it in the bucket. But if the I'm not sitting right there pointing to the bucket, then he's not quite there yet. We haven't practiced that one in a while. I but yeah, that is another form of a target because targets don't mm -hmm. have to be something that's connected to your body or something that you're holding. It can be something that's further away from you. I also taught my last service dog basically the same thing, but to throw trash away. So we could roll up a paper plate or something like that and hand it to her and she would go throw it in the trash for us. I need to teach so. Nick that, um, you know, targets aren't just for service dogs too. And um, sport dogs use them like agility dogs have to hit their marks. If you look at agility equipment, there's, you know, it'll be like blue and then there'll be a section, a small section at the bottom that's yellow or, you know, whatever right. the color is, it's a, that's a target. And the dog has to hit that target with all four feet at some point going through the obstacle and so it's something for everybody to think about if you're doing anything i mean it's a good it's just a good skill to know about and it's a good skill to practice and teach just as a foundation behavior you know because especially if you have a dog that doesn't have a really good recall if you have a target if you have a really strong hand target but you have kind of a weak recall sometimes a lot of times, if you just put your hand out to be a target, that that becomes so it's you know so ingrained that they come and touch, and take and follow the target. Um, both myself and um, I can't think of her name. Anyways, there's another lady that I know that's got a great Pyrenees, and we've both used it with our Pyrenees, and they've been stubborn and don't want to. I'm sorry, I can't use that word. When they're being uncooperative and they don't want to do what they're being requested. They're unmotivated. They're, they're motivated. When they're unmotivated or they have a different idea they of motivation, than, motivation than we do. And so <laughs> it, you use the, the hand target and then their motivation changes and they do what you want them to do. And Ashlyn is saying, you know, like we demonstrated earlier, using the hand target to get in various positions around you. Mm -hmm. Since she sits in a chair and is on the smaller side, she may not be able to reach all the positions around her and she can use her target stick in that way. So I mean, that's a great, great point that your target stick can be used to for getting the dog in the position you want them in, you know, on your left, on your right, behind you when you can't you. reach those areas with your hands. Mm -hmm. So now they're very, very important for service dogs. So these are things, you know, there are things that we all need to take into consideration. And the use of targets is unlimited. You know, right. if you think you th have thought about all of them and probably 10, 20, 30 more come up that you, that you hadn't thought about or you, you didn't realize you were using as a target. All right, I'm gonna show one more target tonight because this is one that's good for pet dogs. If I can get Cam up and moving again because he went to bed on me. So Cam, how Cam, dare he go to bed? So this is actually one that like, sit, sit, sit. He's like, I came, give me treats, sit, good boy. So this is one that I do with all pet dogs and it's a play on nose work kind of thing. And it's also great if you're ever around small kids and they want to interact with your dog. So I teach this to all of the people that I work with that have dogs that love to use their nose. So I'll take a treat and kind of just like a hand target. Instead, I'll have two hands, one with a treat, one without a treat and close them like this. I usually put them behind my back so Cam can't see which hand ahead of time I'm putting down. And then I'll give him both hands and tell him to smell and pick one. And he does a paw target, or sometimes like Azul will do a nose target, but Cam will do a paw target. See if I can get it higher. Pick one, pick it. Yeah, he's nosing it because he knows where it is. Where it, there it is, good boy. He actually hit my leg with it, but my hands were up pretty high. 
So mm -hmm. that is a good one for pets. It's a form of a target, kind of just like shake is a target and high five is a target. I'm I don't know if he'll do a high five because it's harder for him with his joints. But so the pick one is just a fun game you can do when you're bored, like when you're having that day, you can't get off the couch or something and you need to entertain your dog. You can do that. You can also add in a different treat so you can tell which one is more high value. So I have like a milk bone and then I have duck and Cam rarely gets the duck. So I can give them each one and tell them to smell, pick one and tell which one is the high value for him because he picks the duck every time. That's the new treat he's not used to having. And I'm gonna give him the milk bone anyways because he's been a good boy. So we hope you have some ideas and ways that you can use targets moving forward and ways that you can use that to help get some of your service dog foundational skills in with hand targets and ways that you can turn that into tasks. If you do have any questions, feel free to comment on this post or on the video if you're watching it on the YouTube channel, and we will do our best to answer those questions. And keep in mind that targeting is also the basis